So you're looking to figure out how to manage larger video projects. From this point, I'm sure you've gotten a bunch of one-off, smaller, shorter videos that are great and they serve the client well and they definitely put your name on the map. But this is the time that you've been asked to manage a much larger production that allows for multiple deliveries on many fronts. You're kind of confused. What exactly do you do? How do you manage this stuff? And this video is going to tell you how to do that from the post-production side inside Premiere Promo. P Promo. You think you get it perfect, and then uh, there you go. Internet, welcome back. It's your boy Robert Teagarten here again today. We are talking about how to manage larger video projects inside of Premiere Pro. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on the business of being a creative and filmmaking tips. Stick around, see if you like the deal. I'm sure they're gonna provide a whole bunch of value for you here. Like I mentioned, we're talking about how you manage larger video projects inside of Premiere Pro. Now, if you haven't already, check out the video that I talked about, the pre-production and production process on how to manage larger video projects. Today, we're focusing on post-production and what my process is and how I manage these larger projects all the time. Uh, last year alone, we did about a dozen projects that were north of a terabyte most of them in that two to four terabyte range just for media. These projects had multiple deliverables. The largest one we did was up to 64 videos plus promotional material. So I definitely know what I'm talking about in terms of managing larger video projects. First thing we're going to talk about is DIT and really managing your media. Now the thing that makes me crazy anxious is the fact that we We make our living off of tiny pieces of silicone and plastic. Yes, I'm talking about SD cards, memory, hard drives, all of those sorts of things. Uh, you know, most of the time when they work, they work. When they don't, it's crazy. Remind me to tell you a story in a later video about a hard drive that cost me north of $4,000. However, I digress. The thing that is going to make you sleep soundly is your ability to manage media, mainly offload it as fast as possible onto different devices that are going to allow you to make sure you have a copy. Now, what I'm talking about is DITing your media and really what our process is is, is fairly simple. When we're on set, we have a computer with us and we have multiple hard drives, usually two, that are going to take our SD cards, that's all the footage that we captured from multiple cameras, uh, all of the drone footage that we had, any GoPro or ancillary footage that we had, and we're going to load that onto a folder structure, which I will mention in just a second. We take our audio that is captured off-site. We usually don't record audio into the camera, or at least it's just scratch audio into a camera. So we're offloading our audio and our footage footage immediately at site and usually what we're doing is trying to not format or destroy any of the SD cards that we have captured media on. We send that to both myself and one of my partners. So there's a copy that lives on site and one that lives off site, which is definitely a recommendation. Once I've DIT'd media at source, I take it back to my house and I offload it again. Now, if you've seen my videos on hard drive storage and RAID systems, you can kind of find a very affordable way of having multiple drive backups without the necessity of a very expensive RAID. However, since that video I posted, I have purchased multiple RAID setups and even uploaded all of my content after it's done to a product called Backblaze, which is a cloud-based storage system. It's not sponsored, it's just what I use, but there are multiple versions that you can use as well. Now, so just so we're clear, I have a backup that lives on an existing RAID setup inside my house, and I have two, at least two shuttle drives, one that lives with me and another one that I try to keep off site. So you can see the necessity for redundancies in your data is key in managing large video files. Now, another thing that I will also tell you is that you're allowed to store a copy of your project files, which again, we'll talk more about in just a second, to the cloud if you are using Adobe Creative Cloud. This is a setting that you would set up in your project preferences, and when you auto save, it automatically saves a copy of your project file to the cloud using Creative Cloud Services. There's also a way of setting a backup so that you can hit another cloud service like a Google Drive or a Dropbox account uh, so that you can kind of route where your auto saves are happening. That way you have multiple project files in different places, not just your hard drive. There are cloud-based backups as well. 
Now, these are all seemingly neurotic ways of backing up your media in multiple locations, not just your media, but your project files. Uh, but there have definitely been situations where I needed to grab some of those things from the cloud because of a hard drive failure, which is not fun, and I definitely don't recommend it. But having them in multiple places gives you peace of mind, especially in those project files where you can just simply relink media and you're back, good to go. That's what we do with media onset and offset. Now I mentioned that we're taking that media and we're putting in a folder directory that we have that's specific to what our projects look like. That's actually happening simultaneously. You'd probably start your folder directory before you started loading footage, at least I would hope you would. Uh, and for that, we've actually created a folder automation system, which is a video that I'll put together in just a little bit as well that you can check out. I've done one for a PC and I've created one for Mac as well. Let's hop on into the computer real quick and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So here on the desktop, I have this video video folder directory. If I double click on that, it's going to bring up this window right here. And what this project is called is a very important thing to me. Usually what I do is I name it with the year, month, and day, and then the title of the project. So for this one right now, and the purpose of this video, let's just use that particular context. So it is 2023-0119, how to manage large video projects. And so that's what I'm going to call it. I hit OK, and it's going to ask me where do I want to save that particular file. So I'm going to go onto my hard drive. I'm going to go into my projects, and I'm going to choose that folder is where I want it to go. Now, if I go through in Finder and navigate back to that particular folder, what I should see is how to manage large video projects. That's perfect. That's exactly where I wanted it to be. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens. Now, I have six subfolders that are in here, and each individual one one has particular folders that I think are important. So for audio, I double click, I have music and sound effects. We can also have dialogue in there from time to time. Footage, these are all of the different types of cameras that I consistently shoot with and or own. And if I have to, I will change out some of the names of these things to add cameras that are there with us on set. Sometimes we're shooting multiple Sony cinema cameras. Some of them are mine, some of them are our partners or different team members. And so we'll name them as such. Uh, a lot of times I'll go in and just kind of put the initials of the person whose camera it is, and we can do things that way. Uh, so that's what our folder system looks like. And then I would go in here for the different days and create a day drop off or a load drop off. So if we fill up an SD card, I'll name it load one, load two, load three. That way I have some idea of when that footage was loaded. Now this may seem like overkill again, but this is really in an effort to kind of trace our steps back. Everything that I'm doing in this particular context is really in an effort to kind of Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb trail myself back to the start of any particular problems and creating a path like this is something that's very valuable. The next one I move down into is project files. So where I would save my Premiere Pro project files, motion graphics or anything that is logo or design or any After Effects files that I need to go into that particular folder as well. Any renders that we have, we have drafts, final and notes. Uh, so any of the drafts are kind of the first things that we're working on. We'll send those things over to the client in the notes folder. Any back and forth gets saved in the notes folder and the final files that we send to client that have been approved end up in the final. Um, and then stills, we don't do a ton of photo for the work that we do, but oftentimes it's there for thumbnails, et cetera. We'll take a couple snaps. And so those are where the stills go. Also, if we rip any stills from videos, that's where we save them. Now I mentioned how all of this kind of ties into your Premiere Pro project. So Without further ado, let's pop on into Premiere and I can show you exactly how all these folders and systems kind of drag into one another. So as you can see, we have the same folder directory in here that we did when we set up that other project that I was discussing, and it's all the same for a reason. So once I start a Premiere Pro project, I obviously save it here in the project file window. I kind of renamed this one instead of project files, it says Premiere Pro. Uh, and what I do once it's saved there is I grab my footage and my audio and I drag it into my project bin here. Now I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it here because it would just be ridiculous, but that's what I would do in a situation like that if I was starting from scratch. Once that stuff loads and depending on the size of the file or the size of the media, it'll take some time to do it. It'll start generating auto peaks and all the different stuff that it does in Presided Premiere. But then I can start creating different bins for my sequences, my renders and those sorts of things. When I'm in Premiere, you can see I kind of have a loose 
uh, directory that mimics what's going on in the finder or folder window. Uh, so I have my audio and footage that I just drug into the project, but I also create one for motion graphics, renders, and more importantly, sequences. So this is the only addition to the folder directory that I have uh, that's not mirrored on the hard drive. Uh, and that's for sequences. So once I start setting these things up, and again, this isn't a Premiere Pro tutorial on how to edit in general, it's how to manage larger projects. Uh, and so really, I just wanna show you how we kind of set up our sequences and our bins from a footage standpoint. So again, you guys saw what audio looks like. These are all VO tracks that we just laid in there from interviews, music, etc. that's kind of not found its rightful place in the home. And then we see footage, all the different cameras that we had here. And we also use some stock footage for this piece. So I added an additional bin for that. Once I get into sequences, that's really where the rubber hits the road. And you'll see we have different sequences or sequence bins for all the different types of assets that we created for this particular client. This is a very large project with a bunch of deliverables. So you can see there are a lot of bins, but uh, what we have is some BTS content, ecom interviews is really where this kind of sets up social vignettes, web reels, etc. cetera. Uh, we have a thing for multicams, which you can kind of see how we set those types of things up there. And we have the setup of those same sequences over here. We can see all the different things that we've got going on, the different cameras, and then the audio that is associated to them. Uh, so we have different bins for all the different types of sequences that we've put together. Now, again, this really just harkens back to the fact that I, uh, something that I really want to reiterate is that you need to have some sort of Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb trail. Uh, what I see early editors or kind of younger editors do too often is use one sequence for all of the stuff, for your selects, for your edit, uh, and when, that's where you export out of. And then you get to a place where you come back for notes and you start to edit that same timeline. And I know 100% of the time what's gonna happen is that the client's gonna ask for something. You're gonna make that change and then they're gonna go, especially if it's a large enough project, they're gonna say, hey, uh, you were right or we liked it how it was better before. And now you're scratching your head trying to figure out how you're going to get that particular part of the edit back. And so that's really why from a sequencing and a project timeline standpoint, I really try to leave this kind of breadcrumb trail and say, this is how I set that sequence up. Then I made it a multicam sequence. Then I grabbed selects from that sequence. And then there's a work file from that sequence as well. That way I can go back at any particular point in the development of that sequence, make alterations, duplicate the sequence if I need to make a notes file. I just don't eradicate or change the main sequence on these larger projects because invariably someone's going to come back and ask you to make changes and you're going to have to kind of find your way back to that particular position and if you've already nuked all of that work in the first place you're basically rebuilding that sequence from scratch waste of your time waste of your energy and it's putting you further behind with the client deadline and that's no fun the last thing I have in here is a renders folder of all of the different types of renders that go in. Now that's the setting that's inside of your render. You can import it back into the sequence. I don't do that all the time, but if I do, that's where those renders go. So ladies and germs, that is kind of my tip to root on how I manage large projects, particularly from the post-production side inside of Premiere Pro, how we deal with media, how we do with the project files, how we store them and archive them, all of those things. If you like this video, like the damn video. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, ring the the bell for posting notifications. Like I said, I post content on a regular basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. So if this is something that you found value in, I hope to see you around more often. And with that in mind, go ahead and check out this video over here for a little bit of extra love on how you can continue to up your game in video production. I'll see you guys next week in the next video. Peace.